G'day guys, I'm out again with the 308, the thermal scope. I've got some pigs raiding a sorghum crop. Let's see how we go. That is all pig prints right around this crop all looks the same on the edge of that sorghum so it's going to be a matter of finding them in there or being able to get them out or go in after them which is highly unlikely or hopefully just get them on the edges of it this whole road edge is dug up right along it and when I mean it's all dug up it's about two and a half K to the end of the road down there game pad down through here up through the grass so it'll be another spot to keep an eye on see the pigs are wallowing there and they're digging up his irrigation pipe so we'll uh we'll concentrate over here a little bit later we'll send up my little mate we'll do a little bit of scouting see if i can see anything down in that sorghum a little bit of fun i did manage to find some pigs out in this sorghum uh, a couple of wallows no surprise there were pigs on them fair way in though so um i've had a bit of a muck around with them and tried to push them out towards the edges but i mean they're probably three or four hundred meters out in this sorghum and it's not the most easy thing to track a pig and keep it moving uh, they're not too weary about the drone it sort of makes them move but it certainly doesn't flush them like you know firing a gunshot or something at them so um anyway good fun nearly dark now i've just had a scout around this afternoon uh, since i arrived i just wanted to see where the pigs were coming into the crop and look the short version is they're coming into the crop everywhere uh, it's a much different picture than a month ago when I was here and the crop wasn't quite uh, ripe then. It certainly is now and the neighbours have harvested theirs off. So um, yeah, they're certainly hammering this one. Uh, there is sign right around it. I uh, found a few little inroads where the pigs seem to travel in and out in bigger numbers. But uh, yeah, hopefully I can pick a few up on the edges tonight. That hit him pretty hard. Little red dots in a frame there, right between the eyes. And he's got the old uh, googly eyes and bent ears, so uh, we won't show you the other side because it's pretty much not there. What's one way to make my night? Feral cats. For those of you that do like cats and feel like leaving a comment uh, that I'm some sort of murdering bastard, well, I'm just going to laugh at you and delete it. So uh, best of luck to you. Check these guys out. What's better than a dead feral cat? Well, that would be two dead feral cats. Uh, for those of you wondering, these aren't people's pets. Uh, we don't do that. They are an invasive pest species in Australia, probably one of our most harmful to native animals. So I uh, always get a lot of hate on these videos about shooting cats. People think that they're pets. These ones certainly aren't. I shot the one on the left, that dark one, up on a contour. I uh, saw him in the thermal just riding along on the quad bike. Interestingly, walked up to pick it up, looked down in the creek, and uh, here's Mr. White, stripy looking tiger, panther looking thing, uh, looking up at me from about 50 metres away. I just saw those big green eyes in the headlights. So I um, went back, grabbed the gun, set it up on the tripod, and pegged him too. So uh, very happy with that. As you can see, the wind's still up. These things are shaking around in it. It's not the best night for this, but nonetheless, not too bad. This is certainly no trophy boar, but it's the first pig for tonight. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't push record. It all happened pretty quick. These guys, as usual, right on the edge of the crop. Uh, there was a bigger animal with this one, and it jumped straight back in the crop really quickly. So, um, yeah, only really had time to get the gun out. Chuck it on the rail and uh, and pop this one off. So uh, we will continue. That is one dumb fox. This fella's just popped out between me and the quad bike after I've shot that little pig. So I'm just walking my way back and uh, looked at, up the track, saw some eyes in the headlight, and uh, yeah, one little fox. So a uh, quick offhand shot with 308. Not always the most comfortable with a heavy rifle, but it did get the job done.
three times I've come across pigs on the edge of this sorghum crop and they just sort of mosey straight back in. It's, um, it's really frustrating. I've tried to walk in on two groups of them and I've tried to ride in on one and sort of hit them hard and uh, those guys were out of there. So uh, I think they're under a fair bit of pressure out here. Frustratingly, it's about a 25 kilometer hour wind uh, and it's, I don't know if you can see the footage shaking, but it's friggin' freezing. Here's an interesting one. I had a little bit of a conversation with some mates this afternoon that I was going to try and call some pigs in with some squeal sounds and stuff like that on the Icotec. Well, I don't know if I called this one in or it was just coincidental, but about 80 metres out in the paddock there, I've got the quad bike just parked up uh -huh, with some pig squeals and grunts going. I don't know if you can still hear them, it's still playing. And uh, yeah, I turned around and there was some roos that came out of the creek about 100 metres away and uh, just spun back around behind me and this, uh, this fella just came up out of the grass right on the edge of the... Um, the cover next to the sorghum so I don't know if it's coincidental or I've just called in a pig either way I'll take it just walking the edge of this crop now one thing is super eerie you can hear the pigs out in the sorghum squealing and fighting probably shagging uh, they're very vocal but you just can't see in there at all it wouldn't matter if they were only probably 10 meters in it the thermal's just not going to penetrate into that thickness amount of crop uh, one thing that's very evident is there's a huge amount of mice uh, it actually looks like starlight. I'll put some thermal overlay up from the scanner. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy to see the volume that's out here. I've just found a mob of pigs about four or five hundred meters away in the scanner. So I'm going to put a little bit of a stalk in. I've grabbed the gun off the quad and the tripod. Uh, let's try and walk in. The wind isn't ideal, but I'm still keen to have a go. wind wasn't ideal I did feel it up the back of my neck a few times so I thought I won't push it uh, I've plowed in them with the 308 but sure I shot four uh, I did have a sticky bolt lift on one which is a bit annoying uh, the first one I shot was this fella I thought he's not a bad boy he's only probably about I don't know 65 70 kilo that bloody sow up the back though she's a big pig it's just taken me a couple of stints to drag her down there you see her there against my rifle behind her I reckon she's 100 kilos. She's a, a big pig, big high chested thing. So... This fella thought it was a great idea to stick his head up over the edge of the creek bank. Well, he's not going to do that again, is he? Pigs are starting to come out of the woodwork now. It's nearly 3 a.m. Uh, I've got to be honest, I'm getting a little bit weary. But these three pigs, I uh, only got two of them, but there were three, were sort of flitting in and out of the sorghum for about 15 minutes. I could hear them squealing in there. They were chasing each other. Uh, I just sort of walked in on the general area and got lucky. They came out. They were heading up this bit of a track towards me, and then for whatever reason, they decided to head off into the grassland a little bit and then they came back and nonetheless I uh, got two good shots off I was lucky on the second one um, capped it just up the ear right on the edge of the sorghum so uh, 
Yeah, that was a very fortunate shot, that one. Well, I'm pretty sure you'll agree, that's wrecked his night. I've swapped the thermal scope over onto the 6BR. I'm going to head across to the other side of the property. Uh, I'm shooting a lot of foxes and cats and stuff with the 308. So uh, we'll give the smaller gun a little bit of a run. Uh, I've just blasted into a heap of pigs, so I'd say they're going to be a little bit quiet for now. So uh, yeah, if you're wondering which gun's which, the 308 has a round reticle with a cross in it, and the 6BR is just a flat duplex type reticle with a green dot in the middle. I've got to say, I've been chasing these pigs around in this sorghum and not getting too many chances on them. I've just looked over to the left in the scanner and this little boar's come up out of the creek. And he's, uh, he's wandered out onto the road as I'm getting the gun up and turning the quad off. And he just stood in the road. So, uh, yeah, probably not the smartest thing you could do, but one up the back of the ear with a 6BR certainly did the trick. That's a fair lump of a boar, that. Uh, it's probably the biggest for the trip so far. You can just see him over the top of the sorghum stubble. There's one point that I do want to clarify on this video. Cold KFC was consumed. Uh, it was a little bit graphic though. I did drop it, so uh, I didn't video it this time. Uh, if you're wondering, did I shoot a mouse with my 308? No, uh, but I did shoot one with a 6mm bench rest. That'll do it. Another native killer down. I watched this feral cat come through the grass from about 50 metres away, sneaking away. It's a uh, tomcat, this one. Always there's people that are triggered on these videos when I shoot feral cats and foxes. Now, before you leave a comment, just remember I'm in Australia. Have a bit of a look on Google at how much damage these introduced pest species do. They aren't native. It's not America. It's not Europe. The foxes and feral cats have to go. So I've just rode past what I thought was a hot rock. I had a little bit of a look at it, and anyway, it got up and ran off, so it was a feral cat. I've walked in after it, and I could just hear and see it poking along the edge of the sorghum. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like much of a cat when I shoot at it in the thermal, but it's a cat nonetheless. Happy with that. Very happy. This next little clip is what I got up to in the daylight. I figured some of you guys might like a look. You guys might remember that I'm always complaining about dirty and dusty guns. Well, Mark over at Bush Edge sent me this nifty little gun cover, so hopefully it keeps things a little bit cleaner. Now, uh, underneath this is a new toy. I'm just going to zero it. Let's get it out and have a look. I've been talking about building a long-range rifle for a long time. So it's a Bagara B14 HMR Wilderness, so Cerakoted version chambered in 6.5 PRC and I've got a Athlon Cronus BTR 4.5 to 29 by 56 scope on there which is a bit of a beast in uh, 34 mil rings so uh, yeah should be a little bit of fun I've done a couple of ladder tests today with some reloads and uh, very much looking forward to stretching this guy out that'd be right first shot at 289 meters and I've um I've hit the bloody shackle, so um, that's a four inch gong, pretty happy with that. Let's, uh, let's go to a bigger plate, a little bit further out. I've still got a lot of practice to do with this rifle, but this is the first three shots at 470 metres. Uh, it's a little bit windy out here today and there's a heap of mirage, which doesn't help for aiming, but that's, uh, that's shot number one on an eight inch gong, and uh, two and three after a little bit of an adjustment, they're about two inches apart, so really happy with that. Not a bad little trip. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I know only about 15% of viewers are subscribed. Have a look at my Patreon. I'd really appreciate the additional support and I'll see everyone next time.